join us in finding God in the world of video games. And I'm going to quote the Nobel Prize winning fictional philosopher Michael Scott. No, 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 no. How did this happen? Oh, How that, is, did, yeah, that's what he said in the office. Okay. <laughs> How did Chicken <laughs> Range find a way to return to life and infect the Nintendo Switch? Specifically, our Nintendo Switch. I am pretty sure that nobody knows what you're talking about right now, um, but I can Speak. see that you aren't taking this very well, no. whatever it is. Not okay. Is this Not a game? Okay. Are you seeing chickens right now? No, or... there's no there's no chickens right now, but I did see some on my Switch, and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> okay. So perhaps you, like some others who may be watching this, are not familiar with the previous existence of the, the Chicken Range game or its surprising resurrection on our beloved Nintendo Switch. Well, consider yourself among the fortunate. Okay. This game, and I'm going to use the word game very generously here, began its console life cycle over 13 years ago on the Nintendo Wii platform. How have I never heard of this one? Well, because it's, it's not good. Oh. And now here we are on our nice shiny Nintendo Switch consoles with incredible options like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Luigi's Mansion 3, Super Mario Odyssey, Animal Crossing. There's even superior poultry-based options like the Untitled Goose Game if you really need a poultry-based gaming solution. Really and sometimes we do. I, I love I, I love geese and games and just you know and stews. But here we are. Chicken Shoot is what the original game was called on the Wii has been reborn as the sequel nobody asked for named <laughs> Chicken Range. And I guess it's 2007 all over. Maybe it's the chicken's revenge for all those, you know, delicious Popeye's spicy chicken sandwiches we've been enjoying so much frequently. Well, you know, that, I guess we have oh, had a no, lot of Popeye's no, chicken sandwiches. That. What, what else is new? But you know, they have a new fish sandwich too. It's really good. This has nothing to do with the chickens. I know, but now I'm hungry. Sandwich. I'm not even sure that those problems are related to what we're dealing with right now. But <laughs> either way, let's get back to the we here okay. for a second. I so guess we can stop talking about Popeyes for a minute. That'd be best. It's not like they're sponsoring us anyway. Nobody is. But you could. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so the Nintendo Wii was best known for two things. Its unique motion-based gameplay controls, the Wii Remote, were massively popular on titles. Everyone remembers playing Wii Sports and bowling and tennis and boxing and all that. But it was also known for the, the massive amount of shovelware that cluttered store shelves and allowed some of the worst gaming titles ever released to exist right next to a library that includes some of the all-time gaming greats. And I think we all hope that the cost of developing games would reduce and potentially eliminate these shovelware titles. And, and if you're not familiar with the term shovelware, basically it's a reference to the concept that these are low quality, limited budget games that are just shoveled onto unsuspecting consumers without any regard to meeting basic universal quality assurance criteria. Now, if you disagree, I'd like you to consider the following evidence, which is going to be behind me. I, as the prosecution, will refer to this as Exhibit A. Okay. <laughs> so, while you're watching this, people of the jury, I compel you, does this look like a current generation game? Or even a last generation game? Now, you know, if you followed us for a little while, I'm, I'm no graphics snob. But this game clearly has the graphical capabilities of an Atari 2600. And I should know. I had one. Well, you know, if I'm being honest here, let's just be honest for a second. At best, it looks and plays like an original iPhone game. And, and yes, that is actually us playing it on the screen right now. To our shame. <laughs> While graphics are not everything, you know, I'm not a huge snob either. It can be really hard to accept that this title even exists in the same Switch library as games that are actually, you know, good. No, maybe. you're right. And, and the, the funny thing, this is the second time that this game has had an opportunity to live and breathe free air on consoles, which is a feat not every game gets to enjoy. I'm hoping that we're not about to enter the age of a Nintendo console in which free reign is given to literally any concept as long as it can fit on a cartridge, but deep down inside I know better. We must prepare ourselves now for the floodgates to open in all the chicken-based games that could possibly exist to descend upon us. Oh, and, and now we are going back off the deep end with chicken and things. Oh yeah, maybe I should really back in. Later. 
Yeah, maybe just... <laughs> we'll get back on point then. So, okay. Now, I have yes. heard that the, there's some sort of danger of counting your chickens before they are hatched. I'm sure you've probably heard that phrase too, and now I know why. It's because those chickens will come back with a vengeance and release video games that we cannot escape from. Apparently... It's really dramatic. <laughs> well, I try. <laughs> We're going to submit that for my Oscar clip later. Oh Apparently, God. the counting of chickens has been a problem that has plagued us for longer than we know, and in a variety of forms. Now, it hasn't always resulted in the release of horrible Nintendo games, but for thousands of years, we have struggled with the incessant need to quantify every part of the human experience, including the blessing and the provisions that we receive from God. Well, there is absolutely nothing wrong with preparing for the future. The Lord has always been adamant that our peace and rest comes from Him each day, not from our careful preparations and meticulous planning. That's right. From the Old Testament command to only gather the amount of manna that was needed for each day in Exodus 16, all the way to the New Testament guidance about the danger of counting tomorrow's chickens. And you see that in James 4, 13 through There's 15. chickens right. See, there you go. Well, it doesn't say chickens. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe the NIV version says chickens. <laughs> the scriptures are packed full of warnings about these chicken counting conundrums, but none are quite as direct or punished as severely as the time that David sinned against the Lord by performing the most fatal counting of chickens that the Lord had provided. And this is all the way back in First Chronicles chapter 21. And if you read in verses 1 through 8, and we'll just summarize it here, David was moved by the devil to number or count the amount of people in Israel, the population. So David talked to Joab, who was the at the time the general of his army, and said, go count Israel, all of the people, and bring the number to me so that I may know it. And Joab, who wasn't normally the beacon of great ideas, recognized this as a bad one right off the bat. <laughs> and he said, may the Lord make his people a hundred times more than they are but are not all of them your servants? Why do you require this thing? And why would you want to be a cause of guilt in Israel? But David outranked Joab. So Joab had to do it anyway. And he went all through Israel and he counted 1,100,000 men who were of the age and capability to carry the sword, which would be essentially the number of their standing army. And that was in the Israel portion. And then in Judah, which was a separate tribe, 470,000. And Joab didn't even complete the count. He didn't count two of the tribes, Levi and Benjamin, because he knew this was such a terrible idea. And then you see God was displeased with this and he struck Israel with a plague. And David said to God, I've sinned greatly because I've done this thing. Please take away your, the iniquity that I've caused. I've done a foolish thing. So let's stop here and unpack this for a minute. Because you may have heard that and be like, I don't get what the problem is. Well, he's the king, he wants to count explain. people. So let's get to why this is a this was a sin. And God had previously set some very specific criteria for completing a count or what we would call nowadays a census of the people. This was not to be done simply for curiosity's sake, or what it sounds like in this case, for vanity's sake, because he wanted to know how many people am I in charge of. The people of Israel did not belong to the king, not David or any other king that would follow him. They belonged to the Lord. And in the book of Exodus, God had given Moses all the way back then very specific rules for what happens when a census has taken place. In Exodus 30, 11 through 13, God said very specifically, when you take a census of the children of Israel for their number, then every man shall give a ransom for himself to the Lord. So when you number them, listen, that there may be no plague among them when you number them. And then he gives the specific amount of money that is to be collected and if you look, it says it will be an offering to the Lord. So simply put, the numbering of the people of Israel was only for the purpose of recognizing and honoring the reality that they all owed their lives to the Lord. That's why it was called a ransom. And the offering, that was not a tax. It was an offering to symbolize the fact that they had been essentially purchased by God when they were slaves in Egypt. And now they belong to him. And they were, when they counted, they were giving that, that offering to him. And it says very clearly that this would open the people up to a plague, which is exactly what we see happens in David's ill-advised census. David failed to recognize that the only valid reason for counting his chickens, 
you had to chickens think again there <laughs> was, to give, was to give god his proper due and acknowledge him not only as israel's provider but as the one whom all the people belonged to david's recklessness came at a horrible cost his sin opened up a punishment that cost 70,000 people their lives. That's right. There are real and severe consequences when we fail to recognize the actual owner of all of our chickens. But maybe I haven't yet made the correlation clear on how often we do this exact same thing. It's much more than any of us know. You might say, well, I don't have chickens and I don't do a lot of counting of them, so I can't see how this applies to me. So. Remember that what we're talking about is what you value or what you feel recognition for, and it depends on that. So perhaps you post a picture on social media or share a thoughtful post, and then you gauge the value of it on how many interactions or heart emojis it receives. Some of us are chasing the chickens of likes, shares, followers, and growth in our respective audiences. Maybe we're obsessively counting our chickens and validating our ministries through the size of our physical or virtual congregation, the amount of people standing behind us in the choir, or the amount of people who attend a weekly study group. Sometimes we're just looking for validation of our proof of concept by mainstream acceptance and achieving a, a viral breakthrough on TikTok or something. But the problem with all these chicken counting conundrums is that we are placing our validation process and the measurements of blessing and success in all the wrong places. It can be easy to get caught up in the world's way of measuring things. The number of people in a group, the amount of money in an account, the title on a name tag or desk, or the quantity of friends and followers that we may possess. But none of these are things that are measured by the Lord, nor do those areas have any relevance to him at all. Christ did not fret or even respond to the amount of followers that he would gain or lose on a daily basis, and he did both. He was thoroughly unimpressed with physical wealth and possessions, and he frequently challenged people on their preconceived notions of fame and power and status. As a matter of fact, when his disciples came to him after celebrating a successful crusade, there was massive demonstrations of God's power with miracles and demonic chains were broken. Here's what Jesus had to say in Luke 10, 20. Do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I mean, that's very simple, but it's very profound. The Lord does not measure success in our man-made quantifiable terms, but in our status with him. It's our relationship with the Lord that is the only measurement that will matter in eternity. And that means it is the only measurement that matters right here in the present time. It is our obedience to him and his direction to him that we are responsible for not the production of results as we would typically define it. Do you want to know what he gets excited about? Would you like to see what creates an entire success party in heaven based on what we do here? Well. Let's let Jesus tell us in his own words about what really matters. In Luke 15, four through seven, he says, what man among you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. When he, when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. When he comes home, he calls his friends and his neighbors saying, rejoice with me. I found the sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just people who do not need to repent. I mean, think about that. One soul, one life moved into the kingdom of heaven. He is not interested in us counting chickens, sheep, followers, likes, or anything that is a poor substitute for success. He is interested in adding just one more name to the book of life. And if we operate in obedience to the Lord and let him worry about the result, we will see that come to fruition. So don't worry about counting your chickens. He already knows how many you have, how many you will need, and which ones aren't even real chickens. <laughs> this chicken thing <laughs> and don't measure your <laughs> sorry i'm just laughing at your chickens you'll make it i think that's the last time we say chickens in this <laughs> but seriously don't measure your value in terms of your friends followers likes or any other metrics that are a poor imitation for having the almighty god interested and invested into your life as paul wisely notes in first corinthians 3 some of us will plant others of us will water but it is God and 
God alone who's responsible for the harvest. If we just give him our hearts and obedience, he will do the work that only he is able to do.